Hi everyone, today I decided to do something different. We will talk about the top 5 NLP research trends I think I will be watching in 2021. And before jumping into the video, I have to say that those of course are my preferences of the trends that I'm going to be watching based on kind of my focus in the NLP space. There may be other ones that are also very interesting. If you do have other suggestions, please drop, drop a comment below in the video. So let's jump into it. The first trend that I'm going to be watching in 2021, and I'm sure we're going to, is going to be growing, is related to the interpretability of NLP models. We have seen large advances in the last couple of years in terms of developing complex models that work on a wide range of tasks, such as from text classification, building representations, or sequence tasks, including translation and summarization. And in the last couple of years, or last year in particular, we have also seen a movement towards more and more people trying to understand how precisely do those complex models work? How do they produce their outputs? Because they are a little bit of a black box and we're kind of tuning those models and sometimes they work, sometimes they're not working, but it's not very clear when do they work, in which scenarios do they work well, in which scenarios do they fail? Why is this the case? And um, such questions are very important for transparency when using those models in production, for instance. And, and this information will be very valuable to help us to build better models moving forward that don't have the limitations of existing models. So this has been a very big trend. And here I have below one survey which discusses precisely this topic, which you can take a look at if you're interested in this. Another topic that is closely related to interpretability is the topic of NLP evaluation, in particular automatic evaluation, which is the quickest way to evaluate NLP models, but has some big limitations because automatic metrics are imprecise. So you have so the classical metrics like blue for translation, the rouge for summarization, and other ones. And there have been a lot of papers recently proposing new evaluation metrics that supposedly correlate better with human judgments, which is the gold standard of evaluation. Um, however, um, yeah, I think that this, will, this trend will continue of proposing new and better metrics. Hopefully, we're going to move towards some metrics uh, which the NLP community will um, agree that are good to focus on and the NLP community will start adopting them. And it's an interesting thing to watch also which of those metrics will stick and which ones will not going to be used by the community. And um, there's a lot of work in this area, but here I have two papers that are interesting. You can take a look at one is the BIRD score, which is a recently proposed measure of evaluating text generation models using the BIRD model. So using another model to, to evaluate new models. And another one, which was actually the best paper of ACL 2020 was this one, which proposes a set of behavioral tests um, which you can, like like a check checklist of um, tests, which you can apply to an NLP model to check if intuitively um, the model is covering this, this basic checklist, which is very easy to solve by humans, but is much more difficult to solve by models. The third trend is the scalability of NLP models. So we have come up with a huge amount of very complicated models containing billions of parameters. And an issue is... How do we make those models scalable to production level? Because most people are not, it's not possible for them to deploy those models to be used in real time by applications. And we have seen a number of works that focus on model efficiency techniques, such as reducing the parameters of models by analyzing the models and detecting parts of the networks that are not very important to produce the final decisions. Techniques like model distillation, where the um, idea is you're going to be training a small model using the uh, bigger model that you have pre-trained, and you're going to train the, the small model to produce the same output as a big one. And also you have, um, so th these are more, of course, well, all of those are related to all NLP models, but one that is particularly important for text generation tasks like translation or summarization is to come up with ways to scale models 
uh, generation models to long sequences to be able to do stuff like translating whole paragraphs or whole articles, summarizing very long documents efficiently uh, or even books maybe, or doing multi-document summarization of long articles. And this is a very challenging problem because the uh, current models are very, very memory efficient and slow. And um, that's why we have seen a lot of work on stuff like coming up with um, more efficient attention mechanism for the transformer model. And I, here I have again two papers that are interesting to take a look at. One is the tiny bird, which is about distillation of bird model, the bird model. The other one is the uh, latest paper on linear, uh, linearizing the attention of the transformer model, the performer, it's called. So you can take a look at if you're interested in those. The fourth trend is about combining retrieval and text generation models. So uh, one challenge with text generation models in particular and conditional generation or generation in something like chatbots or generation in general that requires a lot of world knowledge to be integrated into the model output is that the models might not have sufficient context, sufficient knowledge available to generate a, an informed output. And so one trend that I've been observing is related to um, integrating retrieval of knowledge from some sort of a knowledge base or for some, some sort of a database of articles and using this as an extra input to the text generation models. In this way, basically grounding the generation models to the real world to produce those outputs in a more informed way. And I'm sure I'm, we're going to see more and more of that in the coming year. Here, I, I, I actually have covered a bunch of those papers in my channel here. Uh, for example, you can take a look at the video I did on this uh, uh, paper to learn more about that. The fifth trend is about coming up with personalized models. This involves a number of aspects because personalized is a wide topic. You have things like limiting the bias of models, ensuring them that they will not be producing offensive outputs that are uh, memorized by the model from a training data. Uh, there has been a lot of discussion about that lately. Another topic is style transfer of text, automatically adapting the uh, generated text produced by the model or by humans to match a desired style, such as converting from negative to positive or um, uh, basically changing the domain a little bit to match something some desired style um, and there has been also a lot of papers on that last year another sub area is personalized text generation basically it's desirable to build not only general models which is what we have been doing predominantly in last years like if you take a look at most summarization papers they try to produce a general um, general summary without allowing the input to control the uh, summarization system in any way and i think in the next year we're going to see a lot more more personalized approaches to text generation, allowing the user to input some keywords or some topic or something like this, specifying more precisely what the user wants at this instance. And this will allow for more interactive uh, NLP models to be developed. And the final topic is domain adaptation, uh, making sure that the models work in multiple domains, uh, depending on the use case and the application of the models and basically taking a model in one domain and then uh, adapting it to a new domain successfully with limited amount of training data. So those are the main five topics that I wanted to cover. To sum up, I want, uh, oh yeah, here I also have a uh, interesting survey on textile transfer, which came up, came out some time ago, you can take a look at. Some other small things that I wanted to, to cover that didn't make it in the top five, but I, I'm sure will be also very interesting is, I'm sure we're gonna see more and more bigger models being developed, there's just no way around it. Uh, bigger models trained on bigger data sets and um, also we're gonna see new self-training objectives which has been a very popular trend as well they will be trained using yeah, new self-training objectives different models different tasks uh, pre-training objectives um, we're also gonna see a lot of new no, novel tasks um, and data sets for novel applications i'm sure um, and finally i'm sure there will be a lot of new frameworks slash libraries being developed that will um I hope this will be the case because there has been a lot of movement in that direction last year as well. And this is really, I think, a really great catalyst for new research and applications of natural language processing. So with that, I'd like to thank you for listening to this video. Please like and subscribe and I'll talk to you in the next one. Ciao.